Okay, welcome everybody. This is the Agnelta Lady, and this is the Cosmic Click, which I do every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for joining me. For anyone that is new, um, I am D. Dones, known as the Agnelta Lady, and I'm based here in Conyers, Georgia, and <coughs> I'm, I'm the caretaker over at Shanti, Atlanta. I teach Agnelta here and other Ayurvedic medicine techniques, um, things that help keep people healthy, happy, and full of peace and love. Um, I have a very small retreat. Um, I am seeing people here socially distance um, on a limited basis, so um, that's where I'm based out of. I'm the Atlanta campus of Shanti Billing Institute, which is run by my teacher, Sheree Charles, and it's based in Tuskegee, Alabama, and so that is the main campus on 13 acres in historic Tuskegee, right up the street from um, Tuskegee University. So if you would like to come by here in Conyers, I welcome it. And um, so you can learn all about agriculture one-on-one, but I'm gonna go ahead and explain what agriculture is. So agriculture, first of all, is done in a copper pyramid, the one that you see right here. And so we do it exactly at sunrise and sunset. And so there's something in nature called the circadian rhythm and agriculture helps balance this out. There's a lot of pollution going on in the world, um, all types of pollution and agriculture is a way that has been scientifically proven to reverse pollution. It cleanses the um, air, the water, it helps the soil, it helps um, um, to do extraordinary things when you're talking about gardening and farming. And um, so in the morning time, we use, um, and for the evening too, we use dried cow dung. We use ghee, which is unsalted butter that has been melted um, down for about 20 minutes with the fat skimmed off. And we use brown rice. You can use um, osmotic brown rice, long grain brown rice, as well as brown rice, unpolished brown rice. And so in the morning time, we put these ingredients inside the pyramid and we chant some san a Sanskrit mantra. And so at that time in the morning, there's a, a flood of ethers, energies, and electricity that envelops the earth. And so there's a interaction between the sun and the pyramid, and then it's nutrients that are released back into the atmosphere, and it goes eight miles up in a two mile radius. So it's a very healing thing for the planet. You're purifying the planet, you're cleansing the air, you're cleansing the water, you're cleansing the soil. The plants are happy, the birds, the birds are jumping around happy. Everything is rejoicing when you do agriculture because we are putting back in what we take out um, because we as humans have been taking so much and that's why the, there's so much pollution and, and um, exacerbation of climate change, uh, which of course you're gonna have climate change that happens through each, you know, several decades, but nothing on this scale. Only because we as humans have been so arrogant to think that we can do all these things, take, 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 and not put anything in. So we repeat this agriculture process at sunset. That's when those energies, ethers, electricities are receding. And we chant a Sanskrit mantra, and we, um, we do agriculture at sunset to once again put nutrients back into the atmosphere. And so the saying is, is that once you heal the planet, you heal yourself because we are part of the planet. The planet is part of us. We live on the planet. We're to be taking care of where we live, where we eat, where we raise our children, where we work. Um, and we've not been very good stewards of doing that. So agriculture is a way to bring about a purification. And it's also not just um, a purification um, on the obvious levels of purification on the subtle level. So if you're prone to argue or even where you live, there's chaos going on, doing agriculture is something that benefits your entire family and the entire community because it's very healing. Over time, you will see a difference in those around you, not because you've asked them to change, but because you have changed. 
Anytime that you sit in front of the, the copper pyramid and do Agni Hotra, there's a transformation that takes place because you're purifying, you're cleansing the earth and you're cleansing and purifying yourself. And we are to live life in a state of constantly purifying, transforming, bettering ourselves. We're not to stay stagnant. We are to become these super divine beings walking in love and light. And Agni Hotra is a way to start working on yourself on the most subtle level. And so this is the basic premise of Agni Hotra. So the resultant ash of Agni Hotra, let me just show you this slide. It can be used, it's an Ayurvedic medicine and people take it internally. You can put some in a gallon um, glass jug with some water and it purifies water, let it sit out in the sun for three days and it's purified. Um, no need to dry, uh, buy any bottled water. Um, and, the, and you can mix it with various herbs to use um, topically as well as internally. So when you have an Agni Hotra pyramid and when you perform Agni Hotra regularly, you are making your own Ayurvedic medicine. You are making it where um, depression can go away. And there are a lot of people that are vets or people that have PTSD or uh, other mood disorders. They use Agni Hotra as a way to calm their minds and not have to use psychotropic drugs. Um, it is a way for you to get peace back in your life for yourself, your spouse, your children. This is a way for you to fine tune yourself right in your home. So that's the alarm for Agni Hotra. And like I said, Agni Hotra starts at 717. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Now, let me move to the side so you can see. This is the other pyramid. And I'm gonna have to scooch down because I'm gonna make sure you all see it. Um, so for any of us joining, we're now gonna do evening Agni Hotra and then we'll continue the talk. Um, let me see if there's anyone come on. Um, okay. So, Okay, let me get back to the main screen. So, <clears throat> you know, a few minutes, about four minutes, three minutes before Agni Hotra, that's when you light the fire. This is the, oh, can you see it? This is the second pyramid. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see this, but I have like three pieces a cow dung in there. They already have the ghee spread on them. Try to maximize the time so we can have more time to talk and for people to ask questions. And the post is uh, listed, the link to join the talk is listed in the comments on my D-Dones page. So if you're viewing from the Shanti Atlanta page or um, Shanti Villa page, or the tree hugger page, just look, just come back to D Don's page and you'll see the, the Zoom link posted. Okay, so it's 7:12. I don't want to light this too soon. Um, but um, I'll light in, a, in another minute so it can, it can burn a little bit longer while we're talking, okay? Okay, so you don't have to do this every morning. And every sunset but the more you do it the more at peace you are and you will see the difference within your body within your thoughts when you do uh, perform Agni Hotra regularly and you will find that you don't get angry as much <laughs> slow to anger and you look at things differently and really and I've said before in previous episodes all we do um, in life is really react. It's our perception of something. That's the reality that we create. And so Agni Hotra, we're creating new thoughts. You're creating, you're constructing yourself as a new person each time. 
So even if you had a bad day, sit in front of the pyramid, you're going to have a good day. So I'm going to go ahead and light the pyramid. So we are now performing Sunset Agnihotra, everyone. Which is the basic home of fire. In case you hear someone use that word, if I use that word. All these are home. This is a home of fire. Agnihotra is the basic home of fire. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, you can see, I'm about to build the fire up a little bit. And I just spilled some on the floor. Okay, you can see the fire is built up, so I didn't I didn't want to put too much on there. Okay, so it's 7:15. We have two minutes till until Agnihotra. So I think I told you about the brown rice. So you set it to the side, and you split it in two parts because every time I say swaha, I'm gonna put. A little bit of rice into the fire. And we and we we speak in Sanskrit and we do the mantras because that's a high vibrational language. Everything's built of vibration. We're built on vibration. The whole earth and the universe is built on vibration. Okay, so now yeah, a little bit of butter to the rice in my hand. And we have one minute. So once I say the mantra, we're gonna sit for about a minute or two, and then we can continue the, the conversation, okay? So we have about one minute. Until Agnihotra. And sit style so, um sit for um a couple of minutes and if you're doing agna hotra home you sit for the entire time until the fire goes out and just sit and just focus on your breathing and just relax and so here we go Praja Patiye Swaha Praja Patiye Idam Namama
Okay, so that is evening agnihotra. Um, so it's very easy to perform, and if you need um, mantras, I can actually post mantras where Sri Charles and I are doing um, those mantras as well as the, the routine mantra and um, the full moon mantra. So it's pretty um, easy. It doesn't take a couple of seconds, even if you're busy. You know, do it real quick. You need to go out somewhere if you feel like in the morning time you need to be on your way to work. Do it real quick while you're dressing until the fire goes out. Um, and the same thing in the evening time. But if you have the time, just sit with the fire until the, until the fire goes out. <clears throat> okay, so the fire has gone out. Okay, so um, let me scoot back in. Ah, yeah, I had to scooch down. <laughs> okay, and so now um, this week, I like to have conversations where you all can um, come in on Zoom, whether it be on audio or video, and ask any questions about Agnihotra. Um, and about anything about, you know, how to live daily. There's a lot of things going on to the planet and to people on the planet. Everything on the planet is, um, is chaotic, but you don't have to be chaotic. And this is one of the ways in which you can affect um, change. Now, a lot of the things that are happening on the planet is because of pollution. You know, we see these wildfires that are hard to contain and we see the water that's being contaminated with bacteria and legionnaires disease and all these things. There's a, a whole host of things that are happening. Um, so of course it affects humans, you know. We're not separate from the planet, even though some of us may think we are, we're part of it. So what happens to the planet, it, it, it happens to us as well too. So a lot of people may feel anxious or having some issues um, and Agnihotra is, is a tool for you to use to get through these challenging times that we're in because there's a cleansing that's going on with the planet um, until there's a rebirth. And after the rebirth, there will be a great time of bliss and peace and prosperity. But it will get worse before it gets better. So this is a tool to help you stay in a very peaceful, divine way. And there's nothing to fear. Okay, so um, I was thinking about, and I'm sure many people, even if outside of the United States, have heard of the the fairy, the Aesop's fable called the tortoise and the hare. And it's about you know this tortoise, the you know turtle, and this rabbit, a hare. Other names for the turtle and um <laughs> and, and rabbit, and they do a race. And the hare, he thinks he's going to win the race, but he doesn't because he he thinks, oh, the turtle is slow. He's going to he's going to lose, so I'm going to go ahead and take a nap. <laughs> so he ended up losing, and the turtle won. And so when you think about this, we think about all these distractions we have. We may think that we're going to do something in a certain way because we know something, we're faster, better, whatever it is, and then we lose sight of it's the slow, steady path that makes life strong the way it is. And so a turtle um, symbolizes, pretty much all over the world, symbolizes um, perseverance, longevity, and wisdom. So the tortoise, to me, in this story, symbolizes what we have to do to stay on the path, to not get there the quickest, but to be on the path, observe, gather knowledge, and taking your time to learn all the lessons that the Creator, Mother, Father, God wants us to learn. And so, um, yeah, I think in one particular culture, the, the, the tortoise, um, the turtle signifies mother, you know, motherhood. But all across the world, the tortoise symbolizes wisdom, longevity. And so that 
uh, I was thinking about that fairy tale, of, you know, about we as humans are, you know, we do things so quickly. We live in a very fast paced world and the world is causing people to sit still and stay home, you know, but are you still trying to jump out there and be fast like the rabbit? Or are you trying to go inside yourself, slow down and take a path slowly? Because it's on that path where you get the knowledge when you're silent and you're still. And so in the Cosmic Clinic, we often talk about the times in which you can sit quiet. There are times that start from 3 a.m. and then you have 4 a.m., 5 a.m. You have um, sunrise, then you have 10 o'clock, 12 noon, 3 p.m., um, and then you have sunset. And these are the times in which you can sit still and meditate or, meditate or pray. And this is when you get the boost of energy from the cosmos. It's good for your immune system. And actually, this is when some of the most profound communication comes from the universe, only when you're sitting still. And so to me, the tortoise signifies the need for humans to sit still and then walk the path slowly, carefully, but steadfastly to go on life's journey. We don't wanna be like the rabbit. We wanna be like the tortoise. And so, and then when you think about turtles, you have tortoises, turtles, and this thing. Um, turtle, you know, turtles are known to live a very long time. And, you know, they have a protective shell. You know, they're, they are used to breeding and, and living in a certain area. As a matter of fact, they, they've had it, I, think, I know here in Georgia and other places too, when they have to move turtle, turtles, when they've built something, um, they say they break out of the containers when they're trying to move them. They're trying to go back to where they come from, where they live, where they've bred. What they've done, you know, usually they live in one self-contained area for a very long time, for, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. And they try to go there. They have this instinct to go back to what they know, go back to that natural order. And I think about we as humans, we have gotten out of sync of what really it is to be in sync with the natural order of things. So when you think about everything that's happening today, are you in line? What is natural? Are you listening to your instinct? See, the turtle is going to go back to what it knows. And as a matter of fact, the turtle um, is, um, along with other animals, but the turtle is magnetically sensitive. So it's guided in part through the magnetic field that the earth produces. So we as humans, <laughs> we build things and try to move animals around and they try to get back to what they know when really we should leave them alone. And just like ourselves, you know, we also respond we're sensitive to the magnetic field they now that they don't know exactly how sensitive but anything upon the planet is uh magnetically sensitive to the magnetic field so you have bees and migratory birds whales all these animals that that is how they function biologically on the planet and so when we have dirty air and we have dirty water and we have noise pollution we have emf pollution from cell phones and satellites and all this this wired communication that affects the emf that magnetic field yes it does and so agriculture is a way to set that pattern right it cleanses okay so these animals are out of place okay and we know they're out of place and they've done studies on sea turtles and in labs and they have found that when they distort the magnetic field, they try to point themselves back to know where they're supposed to go to their breeding ground. So there's something innate that's within the animals that includes us that knows where we're supposed to be, where the path is supposed to be. And the key is to keep everything as clean, as pure as possible so we can do what we're put on earth to do. We're here to take care of the planet. We're here to be productive and peaceful and loving and to connect with each other and to learn our lessons while we walk upon the earth as divine beings. 
So the magnetic field um, is being tampered with. That affects the atmosphere, okay? That actually reverberates into outer space, this pollution that we've created. And it is connected to other planets and other solar systems. You may have heard um, on the um, several television networks that have talked about there have been radio bursts from outer space and black holes have um, exploded and all these things are happening. And why do you think that's happening? You know, now we have even more satellites floating up in outer space so we can have more cell phone coverage and all these things. But, um, you know, with the magnetic field being distorted, that reverberates out into the ether, into outer space. And so it creates a space shrinkage, okay? And it affects other solar systems and other galaxies and other planets. And I may have mentioned to you before about the moon, and we're t I think NASA are now trying to get private companies to go up there and collect <laughs> collect things from the surface and whatnot. We the moon has been changing consistently, and now we're going to interfere even more. And actually, the moon is deeply, closely connected to the biological functions on this planet. So now, okay you have the pollution that is spreading out. I mean, even with planet Uranus, um, you know, they've been studying and seeing more rings around the planet. They're gonna find even more things on planet Uranus because of the things that we're doing. So just know that when you're doing agriculture, it is setting our planetary cycle um, the way it's supposed to be every time you do it. And as a, as a result, when we are intact, planet Earth, then this affects what happens and it reverberates from the magnetic field going into outer space and to other planets. We're not just here alone by ourselves and everything that we do just affects us. Everything we do affects the entire solar system. And that may be something that's hard for a lot of people to fathom, but as humans, we're just a little tiny speck. You know, we're, we are so arrogant to think that we're the most important <laughs> life form, you know, on this planet and, and beyond. But no, this is a collective. We live together in harmony. That's what we're supposed to do, right? And we're not sticking to that agreement that we've agreed to from many, many millennium ago. We as humans, we have that purpose and we have that contract with the creator of what we're supposed to do while we're here, while we incarnate um, as humans on this planet, because planet Earth is only the very beginning. Death, it's not really a death, it's just a, a the this physical body's death before we go on into other realms of existence that exist beyond this planet. So when we're talking about pollution, we're really talking about the very essence of your being, the very essence of the planet, how all of these things affect how we live our lives and live our, 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 our destinies on this planet, okay? It is important that we cleanse the earth because the earth is only the first stop for what we know as life. And life is many layered. We're here to learn so many different things until we get to the next plane of existence. And these are things I just wanted to touch upon. Sri Charles and I, um, when we have these conversations, that's where the idea for the show came about. I said, we need to start talking about the conversations that we have uh, between my teacher, Sri Charles, and um, I've been his student for about nine years, but a lot of these things we don't really talk about in public, but there really is no more time and left because we're, we're on the brink, we're beyond the brink, and these things need to be told. And so we as humans, because we are made in the image of Mother, Father, God, that means that we have the same qualities as Mother, Father, God. And I don't think a lot of people really realize what that means. But to, in order for 
these attributes to come to you, you have to sit still and listen and things will be revealed to you. Things will be revealed to you when you sit still, and especially when you're doing agriculture, when you sit still, subtle things happen, and there's no need for you to read a book. You become the book. The knowledge comes to you. And like earlier, I was talking about these fairy tales, or if you hear a, a, a lie or any kind of fantasy story, know that sitting still allows you to see the truth in any lie. The truth in any book, they may have something that's a falsehood. You become the book because then the information is given directly to you if you just simply sit still during the cosmic clinic times or sitting still, period. We move around too much and we don't take the time to sit still and just listen. There's so much that can happen and come to you. And true knowledge, and I've said this before, is a wonderful thing that is bestowed upon you and there will be not a need for books. The true knowledge is even beyond any book that you could ever read. And so for those that um, like to read and, and you have um, advanced um, degrees and things like that, there is a level beyond all of that, beyond any advanced degree, any scientific, discovery or technology that we're doing here there are layers and layers and there's a whole layer of, of knowingness that happens once you get outside of the human experience of intellect and degrees and knowledge and books and that's innate within each and every one of us okay each and every one of us we are encyclopedias when you sit and do Agna Hotra, you're activating what they call, try to call junk DNA. There is no junk DNA. The created and created in a junk. What happens is, is it becomes activated. And that's when you can get beyond your five senses, the five senses that are normal to the human experience. Then you have five other senses that become expanded when you do Agna Hotra, when you sit still. And that's what we're talking about when we say that you don't need to read a book. And this is beyond any human knowledge. We're talking about cosmic knowledge, knowledge, direct knowledge from the creator. Okay, that's what we're talking about. This is the knowledge that is stored in every cell in your body. And that's within your DNA. Okay, this is something that may have been lost over the years. But can be gained just by sitting still. So I'm going to pause here for a second um, in case anybody wants to jump on and ask any questions. What happened here? So if anyone's just joining, um, this is the Agnihotra Ladies, the Cosmic Clinic. And I'm the agricultural lady, and we've been talking about um, quite a few things. <laughs> we've been talking about um, uh, electromagnetism and pollution and taking care of the planet and the Ayurvedic knowledge of agriculture. So getting back to agriculture before we close for the evening, agriculture is a way for you to heal a neighborhood that may be not only polluted, but polluted with negativity, with thoughts and actions. Say you have uh, crime there, like break-ins and uh, murders and things like that. I would say to you, do agriculture in those neighborhoods as a community. You know, share in doing the fire so you can heal your neighborhood. You heal yourselves, your change in how you react to the neighborhood, and then other people there, whether they know you're doing agriculture or not, they too are healed. And in terms of what's going on now with the Legionnaire's disease in the schools and things like that, I would say to you, do agriculture at home. I think this is happening in Ohio, Pennsylvania. And pack with your children if they are going into the classroom with some agriculture water. They can drink purified water. It's better than, than, than tap water and it's definitely better than bottled water. 
Um, you can drink this and it's very healing. So in, in these, if you are familiar or you live in a community where there is polluted water, agnihotra is the solution for that. I know that um, um, there was a portion of the Amazon rainforest where they could not grow food. And they did agnihotra as well as other home of fires there for three months and they were able to restore the soil because after a while, um, people won't be able to grow food. And we're already affected. We talked about this last week about because of the heat and the flooding that affects the, school, um, the crops. So after a while, you won't even be able to grow weeds. That's been prophesied many centuries ago by my teacher's teacher, um, Sri Vasant, Massa Vasant. So and we're seeing these things unfold now. And agriculture will be the only way that you'll be able to grow because you're purifying your, the soil and the air and the water every time you do agriculture. And the longer you do it, the, the better your atmosphere becomes. You'll find that animals um, are be, be more in abundance. You'll hear more joyful songs from the birds. And you, you can definitely tell the difference. I have people that have come to Shanti Villa Institute in Tuskegee, Shanti Atlanta here. And they say, the first thing they say they got to call my God feels different here. And in Shanti Villa, she Charles has been doing agriculture for more than 45 years. I've been doing agriculture for nine years, three years here at Shanti Atlanta here in Conyers. And it does make a difference. So this is the solution um, to, if you're gonna be trying to grow food, this protects the soil, increases nutrients in the soil um, because um, harvest time and increases production. Um, in terms of healing, everybody's not gonna be able to get to the doctor. Um, some people are not even going now because of COVID-19. They don't wanna go to a doctor's office and um, you know, they're scared something's gonna happen to them. So this is a way for you to you know, make your own Ayurvedic medicine um to treat yourself um people sit in front of the fire like i said with heart conditions and depression and other issues and it's very healing so um this is a very healing ayurvedic practice that anyone can use and utilize for peace and happiness planetary healing human healing animals far of our healing and for you to get to a level of understanding who you really are and how connected you are to the planet. I don't think anyone really realizes that, goodness, the planet, I mean, you, you can't have the planet in despair. I mean, the planet is water runs in our veins, okay? The soil, you know, we have pieces of that in us too. I mean, Carl Sagan proved, you know, long time ago, and he said, we have all the same stardust, everything throughout the planet, beyond the planet, it's all within everything on the planet is within us. So we, we can't be sick. As a matter of fact, she Charles and I were talking about, heck, if all the humans died, the planet would flourish. <laughs> so really we're arrogant to think that the planet needs us the planet needs us to be a, a good caretaker be good caretakers it doesn't need us to destroy it and so on that note i'm going to um, sign off for the evening as always i want you to think about all these things um, that have been discussed and your role as a human and taking care of the planet taking care of yourself and understanding that agnihotra is a way for you to unleash um, um, those senses that are beyond the five senses. And we've been talking about them that the last several shows that there's something beyond the five senses, beyond your sight, your hearing, your taste, what you feel, okay? There's some, there are a lot of things that are marvelous beyond that that you can experience if you just sit still at those cosmic clinic hours, three o'clock, 4 a.m., sunrise, 10 o'clock, 12 noon, 3 p.m., and sunset. Those are the times. And, and if you can't do a fire at those times, just sit still. Be quiet. 
and receive what the, the universe wants to tell you. Um, if you can light a fire, that's even better to deepen that connection. Okay. And at the same time, when you're doing agriculture, you're taking care of the planet. And that's such a wonderful, marvelous thing to be able to do, to be able to reverse the ravages of pollution. Thank you so much for joining me today or this evening for the Agriculture Lady. And like I said, next Saturday, I have an, a, a very important bit that I'll be doing. Um, so I won't be doing um, the show on next Saturday. So I'll have to see you the, the Saturday after next Saturday. But thanks so much for joining and have a wonderful evening.